you know, people considered me a child prodigy in terms of a pianist, and I, I heard a lot. I mean, I played by ear. I was always making things up. But I think a child prodigy is, you know, someone that's playing the Rock 3 at, at mm -hmm. 7. You know what I mean? I wasn't like that. But I, I was, um, let's put it this way, at 5, I, ex I exhibited gifts which made other people in my family feel eclipsed and stop doing it, sadly. Luckily, they've picked it up now. But, you know, I, I, I could lay claim to a certain artistry. That stuff, it's interesting. The thing about Stevens, I mean, I won the Stephen Sondheim Award. Yeah. And I think that um, some of that is, you know, the way people need something mm -hmm. to spin. and. Like the whole notion of air, more for a long time, there was um, when Audrey McDonald made her first CD, and mm -hmm. I was on it with some friends of mine who were other theater writers, and suddenly for a little while it was like it was as if we were going to save the theater, or in a way, we're just doing. The truth is, I'm just a sort of compendium of what I grew up listening to. When I was growing up, I did not distinguish between. I loved. Bear. I loved Britain, mm -hmm. uh, but I loved the Beatles. I loved Joni Mitchell. I loved Bernstein and Copeland mm -hmm. and Kurt Weill. And the truth is, it was all music to me. Nothing. I didn't grow up in a, a sophisticated household musically, so I just thought, oh, this is music. And I was as obsessed with Joni Mitchell as I was with Britain. And so then you grow up. Oh, and you know, you start to see, like, for example, I was really into um, a lot of, like, 20th century opera when I was little, like, including people like Minotti. But then, the natural evolution, like, then someone like Stephen Sondheim writes Sweeney Todd, right? And, um, and these pieces start being done in opera houses. I feel like I'm a natural outcropping of what has been happening all along. I'm shocked a lot of times when people use words like crossover, yeah. only because I'm like, but everybody, it's, it's, it's just changing. I mean, and so it was interesting, like for example, this year when I did Grapes of Wrath, I, I didn't know what kind of reception the piece would get, only because it's a big piece and I thought I'm really gonna do what I do in this piece. Mm -hmm. Some people are probably gonna like it, some people are gonna be really mad. And lucky for me, there were more people who liked it than more people mm -hmm. that got mad. You know, we had, I would say we had m many more admirers than detractors and um, it's been a ride I mean it's done well in the Apple world it's it's having a lot of productions <laughs> elsewhere but you know it's me it's like is it theater is it opera is it you know what I mean um, it's funny and then today we ended the master class with uh, arias songs from my musical my life with Albertine they felt like arias to me you know that's the thing, both. When I was, I was 17, and I got into Carnegie Mellon University yeah. as a pianist. You know, they had a great music department, great theater department. So I got in as a pianist, I was studying, and it suddenly sort of dawned on me. I really had a, one of those like moments where you're, you know, it was a revelation. And the revelation was, I realized that the only reason truly that I played piano was to explore with my hands the ideas of all the composers whose work I loved. I wanted to explore Messiaen, I wanted to explore Hindemith, I wanted to explore Mio, Kurt Weill, Stephen Sondheim. And so I just thought, you know, maybe I'm a composer. So I went and found out what you had to do to get into the composition department. And in three weeks I wrote like a hundred pages of music. I remember I was I really stunned my parents, especially my father, because I came home for Christmas vacation and I wouldn't play. All I would do was write. Yeah, and it was like, this is right. Yeah, it was like walking into your own life. And it was so appropriate. And for example, I had all these friends who were poets at Carnegie Mellon. I immediately started setting their stuff to music. I became an actor. I started writing for the drama department. When I came to New York, I was being asked to write art songs, but also for the theater and cabaret songs. And now I just sort of do it all. And the things I have coming up, I'm writing a musical with Craig Lucas and Michael Corey for Playwrights Horizons. 
I'm really writing a musical for Signature Theater that I think, if it goes through, that I'm writing the text for. I'm writing an opera for the Met. I'm writing an opera for Minnesota Opera. I, you know, it's sort of, you name it, I'm doing it. And it, but it all feels like one thing to me. It doesn't feel like I have to put on this hat for there or this hat for there. It just feels like that's my voice. So in my life with Albertine, I didn't, I just wrote what felt appropriate for the piece theatrically. Yes, because well, for one thing, there's dialogue, there's scenes. Mm -hmm. The Grapes of Wrath is all singing. Mm -hmm. But I have another opera that I wrote for the Lyric Opera of Chicago called The Morning Store that because of a uh, circumstance, that uh, the circumstance I wrote it for it was never premiered. We did a workshop there. If that gets premiered, which we're talking about premiering in Fort Worth, that's an opera with scenes. Like, there's dialogue in it that I wrote with Bill Hoffman. I do. I mean, the only thing I would say is this. I'm going to be honest. I loved my experience with Grapes of Wrath. And one of the reasons I loved it was because I got to play on a much bigger stage. I had a 60-piece orchestra. I had a huge chorus, a very large cast. You know, in musical theater nowadays, the, with budgets, what they are, if you have eight instruments, they're going to try to talk you down to seven. If you have seven, they're going to try to talk you down to six. They'd be happiest if you did a kazoo and a you know penny whistle, and it's difficult. And you you learn to work within those confines. But a lot of times, I feel my music is more symphonic, and yet what we're hearing in this musical is seven instruments and no bass playing it. And so sometimes. With Grapes of Wrath, I felt like, put me here for a while. I really liked it. I, I want to keep doing that. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you can really create a lot of color with seven instruments. But believe me, when all of a sudden you have a symphony in front of you, just for me, because it was sort of new to me, I haven't... Last year I did a big song cycle um, for full orchestra and E. e. Cummings texts. That was really exciting, just to hear mm -hmm. that kind of... Stop. To the piece I might do at Signature, it's a piece about a family that I wrote mm -hmm. the libretto to. Yeah. Yes, I do. Actually, um, it's funny that you asked that because um, I had a big piece premiere at Lincoln Center, uh, 2005. It's a, it's really a two-act song cycle. It's really, it's practically, a, it's a one-woman opera for mm -hmm. soprano, clarinet, and piano called Orpheus and Eurydice. And it was, it won the Obie Award and it was just, it's been recorded and published and I've been working on it here with, with Devin, who you heard today doing Wild Swans. Um, she's doing it to talk with this summer. So it's been interesting working on it with her. And also while I've been here, I wrote um, in 19... 96, I wrote a poem in 15 parts called Green Sneakers. And I've been asked to be the um, composer in residence at Vail, the Vail Music Festival next summer. And I've really been toying with the idea of setting that to music so that it would be like a companion piece to Orpheus and Eurydice, that Act 1 would be Orpheus and Eurydice, then Act 2 would be Green Sneakers. And I, I'm pretty sure I'm, I, I just set the first two sections and asked a baritone, a guy named uh, Jesse Blumberg, who was in my opera, The Grapes of Wrath, to do it with me. So we'll see, it might happen. I mean, it's a commitment. It's like, and I'm sure Vale, I'm not sure they were expecting an hour-long song cycle for baritone and string quartet. So who knows? I and mean, who knows if I'll get it done for there. But I'm certainly going to start. And I might just offer sections of it, or, you know, we'll see. It's so beautiful there. I've actually been, I've spent a lot of time in Aspen. I taught master classes there and did a concert in, in Aspen. My first opera was in 1996, I wrote an opera of the Tibetan Book of the Dead for Houston Grand Opera. It was actually a very unusual circumstance. I had a partner named Jeffrey who was, um, he had AIDS and he was, he wanted to die as a Buddhist. And he asked me if I would study Buddhism and study in particular the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying. They had, and um, I wrote an opera for him, and it was the opera he sort of left the world to. It was a big deal. No, I mean not yet.
It's funny because I've been talking to Lincoln Center about doing. Um, it was it was premiered there. It was done in Philadelphia. It hasn't been done since then. And when I did my Orpheus and Eurydice piece at Lincoln Center, I did it with the choreographer director Doug Verone, and it was a fantastic collaboration. And we want to do my Tibetan Book of the Dead together, as because the Tibetan Book of the Dead is for twelve players, eight singers. And what we'd like to do is twelve players, eight singers, and Doug's company. Actually, interestingly. It's okay. just one of everything. Okay. It's like it's really like a chamber orchestra uh -huh. of you know, one trumpet, one trombone. You know what I'm saying? Just you got it all. I'm not allowed to discuss okay. the subject matter because uh, it hasn't been announced. Okay. So we agreed not to speak about it. <laughs> okay. People know that I'm going to do. They've been, they've commissioned a group of composers. It's their first collaboration with Lincoln Center Theater. So. Peter Galb, he's taken that place all over the map. It's exciting, I think. The Met feels very happening right now. Even when you enter it, it feels like it's a buzz. You know, very lively. I feel like things are booming. As a matter of fact, I'll just say, Grapes of Wrath opened to, you know, we sold out and we had incredible reviews and reception. And look at, just right after that, Frau Margot opened in um, Fort Worth, Anna Karenina opened in Florida and St. Louis. I feel like there's so much activity. I'm very excited about about opera and art song, and I'm still being commissioned all the time. So must somebody must be interested, right?